Uh, although I'm in the cloud business, I still prefer to do these events in person. So it's a pleasure to be here in Dresden and uh, meet all of you and uh, also reconnect with some old faces. Uh, fun fact, what's the relationship between AWS and Dresden? This is where we have our development center for Nitro, which is a key component that goes into all our servers to secure the access to the hypervisor. So not many people know about that, and we are actually in the place where that's developed. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how we're working with telcos and how we're bringing value to their 5G uh, networks and rollout. And there's four uh, areas that we've been working. One as you might imagine, is about uh, helping to cloudify the infrastructure. And uh, we're working both with the telcos as well as with the network software vendors in order to achieve that transformation and to uh, enable the, uh, uh, the migration or evolution to cloud-native solutions. We're also helping in terms of automating the uh, operational components. Uh, more and more, the networks are more complex and automation becomes more critical. Uh, we, are, we have a number of tools uh, that we are using and helping the telcos and uh, the software vendors to create those capabilities. Third, uh, we're bringing analytics and machine learning uh, as a way to tap into all of the data that is generated and collected in a network and help with the customer experience. And then the fourth area is helping build um, new revenue streams and build solutions to run on top of the 5G networks and uh, accelerate adoption of those. The, one of the questions people have is, what is the cloud? So we're coming from a telco, very physical infrastructure, and the cloud seems to be abstract. Now, the cloud is very physical. And uh, at AWS, we have what we call the regions, which are the main components of our cloud offering. Currently, we have 26 of those regions across the world. One of them is here in Germany, in Frankfurt. We have more, eight more coming up, uh, one of them in Switzerland this year, uh, helping uh, the, the, the Swisscom business as well. And uh, those regions are actually uh, consist of what we call availability zones. So we have three different locations separated uh, with enough distance to not be disturbed jointly by natural catastrophes. And uh, each one of those availability zones have multiple data centers. And that's where you have the largest uh, scale and capacity. Uh, and uh, so when you put all together, we actually have 84 availability zones across the world. And then we uh, have started to deploy what we call local zones. So those are extensions of uh, our regions. And again, in Germany, to give an example, we're building one in Munich, one in Berlin. And that's uh, our, an extension of our data centers to be closer to our users. Uh, and the, the main reasons are for low latency, and that applies to the telco infrastructure or data residency. Uh, from there, we've been working with uh, uh, telcos uh, and partnering to deliver Mac solutions. We call it Wavelength. Um, again, referencing uh, Germany, we have three wavelengths with our partner Vodafone that were launched uh, last year. And this is where we bring the cloud infrastructure to the 5G network uh, so that you have the lowest latency for customers that are connected to that 5G network. From there, we uh, go even further and provide uh, solutions for on-premises. We have what we call the outposts. So those are managed uh, AWS racks or servers that we deliver into our customers' premises. They connected it to us, either internet or direct connection, and we'll be managing that infrastructure for them. And we go even further for uh, beyond uh, what we would call the edge of the network. Uh, we have solutions, software solutions that can run on devices that, uh, that could operate uh, disconnected form, and we have even ruggedized uh, devices uh, that can be deployed in areas of no connection, but also extreme conditions. And this is the cloud, and now we extend uh, the cloud to the edge. Now, this provides a similar infrastructure, similar APIs, and similar tools. And that's what the developers are looking for. The developer community wants a consistent environment, uh, wants to have uh, the ability of deploying their application in the environment that they know how it works and operates, 
they know uh, the uh, uh, operational capabilities, they know the APIs, uh, that's how the elements they use to develop their applications, and they have the same tools and the same pace of innovation in the cloud. And all of the previous elements I've described to you uh, have that capability. And that's how we're helping the telcos on the migration to the cloud on the infrastructure. These are public references where we're uh, working uh, essentially in the, let's call it the uh, core part of the network, although there's also some conversations happening uh, when it comes to open run and how to apply and use the cloud in those environments. Uh, there's uh, the uh, need for um, a number of uh, components that you can relate to what I just uh, told you before. So there's really an alignment between what telcos are looking in terms of operating 5G infrastructure and the capabilities that we have already in the cloud. Uh, from these examples you can see here, I would like to point out a Dish. Um, it's an operator in the US, for those of you that don't know. They built a 5G network nationwide from the ground up. They went live commercially last week in more than 100 US cities, and it took them uh, just a little less than a year to bring this all together. We're a partner providing infrastructure, working with their network software vendors, and also providing the automation. And then we have uh, Swisscom and Telefonica that spoke today here. Uh, I'll let them explain what they're doing with us. We have also Telenor. Uh, and all of them, uh, we're, we have different solutions with different partners that we're helping them set up for their business. Now, going beyond the pure infrastructure of building the network, uh, I mentioned Wavelength. Uh, and this is Mac. So for many years, um, Mac has been under discussion on what are the use cases and how to enable it. Um, personally, I know that myself, I was part of the Etsy Mac working group, defining the specifications. Um, and with Wavelength, uh, what we brought is the extension of the AWS cloud to the Telco 5G network. And uh, the initial uh, use case is latency. So and you can, as you can see here, and as you can imagine, the closer you bring the cloud cap uh, capability to the user, the lower the latency. But the most important factor is the development community. You cannot have an edge cloud if you don't have developers that uh, bring applications to the edge cloud. And by providing, again, the same uh, experience to our development community, we are enabling them to adopt the wavelengths and start doing those experiments, either in what we call a public Mac environment or on a private Mac environment with our alternative solution called Outpost. We have some use cases um, to share that have been already been validated and are in production. The, uh, uh, the, they, they go from um, video use cases, uh, like on the left side, uh, the project that we did uh, with Verizon, to connected cars with Vodafone in the UK, and uh, smart factories, again, that we have experience uh, with Verizon. But we also have, and that's an interesting part, uh, sports or live events. We already have a number of different use cases uh, working uh, with uh, different, uh, different providers. Uh, Sportable is a solution working with Vodafone in Europe to track, um, in this case in the, is for rugby, so to have devices inside the, the rugby balls, uh, or I don't know the name how we call them, but uh, so to, you can track in real life and you can stream information in real life uh, with a shot tracker in the US with Verizon for American football. Uh, and all of those are running on wavelength on 5G. And uh, with Orange uh, Velodrome, you have a different solution, runs on Outpost. So there's an Outpost deliver within the uh, premises that does the processing of the information and then passes the, uh, that information to the cloud where the analytics are processed uh, or uh, processed further. So those are examples of uh, real use cases that are in production already today. And this is thanks to the uh, partnership that we have with the telcos and putting those uh, facilities at the disposal of those developers that start experimenting and bringing those use cases and looking at the value of running them at the edge of the network. So in summary, uh, 
uh, we are helping MNOs uh, through uh, to, to create, uh, to bring them capabilities for them to do the transition to cloud infrastructure. Uh, we're helping them transforming their 5G uh, core and uh, uh, deploy the network in an innovative way. Um, example, DISH being able to bring up a nationwide network in uh, a bit more than one year. Uh, developing use cases uh, that they can monetize, where they can monetize 5G and uh, unlock uh, further opportunities within the Mac space. Um, if there's any questions, I'm available now or later to answer any questions you might have. <laughs>